definitely harder to, uh oh, uh oh. No, 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 no. <laughs> so that was, that was a good test. That was a good, te that was a good test right there. Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam and I have something that we're gonna test out today. This, this is a DIY FPV drone. I built this one myself. It's amazing. We're gonna test out these propeller guards slash ducks from this designer who designed it. I don't remember your name, sorry about that. I'll have a link down in the description below this video. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. I use them to create these ducks. We have UTR 8100 resin and ABS 3D printed right here. We're gonna see three things today. Do these even work? Will it fly? Probably will. And what is the performance like? Can we do all the cool stuff that we could normally do without them? And how much abuse can it take? We're gonna see what it takes to break these because we're not gonna come home with these still attached. Let's go. Okay, we've got a battery on here. I'm gonna get my goggles and my transmitter going. Backwards mode activated. Tap and hold. Goggles turning on. Transmitter. Thank you. Antennas out. Switches probably where they're supposed to be. Lanyard powering on. Mmm, like music to my ear. Should we have video signal? Schnikes! I forgot it, it has the different video transmitter on here. So I have to go through this whole process to switch that around and then like rebind them and stuff, which is dumb. We got the goggles working now. We're gonna set it down. We're gonna do our initial test flight. Always line of sight first to make sure that it's working. Three, two, one. Oh, it doesn't like that. But when I pump the throttle, it gets really wobbly. And then I have to like ease off the throttle a little bit. To be fair, we do have the weight of the, of the go-to on here and, and this little boom. This is actually printed out of polycarbonate. So it is quite lightweight, but we do have this weight out here. A little physics lesson there for you. If the weight is way out here, it's hard for it to balance. The drone is gonna try and correct and, and give thrust in this direction, but then it's gonna be like too much and too little. So it's gonna do this little wobbly number. So that's how that works. Take it off. Okay. All right, interesting. Yeah. Here's a, a, a post. Maybe let's pretend that this post is like a Lamborghini that I'm flying around. Oh no. It only cost me a thousand dollars to repair it instead of ten thousand. Let's fly around this, these little spaces here. Okay, yeah, we can maneuver in here, right? Let's see if we bump up against something, you know. Ah! 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 So that chirping sound is uh, the propeller hitting against the duct or against the prop guard. So better to hit it against the prop guard than against the actual thing. Uh, we could go over here to these trees. So it's definitely harder to, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. You hear that? Something weird happened there. That wasn't good. I was gonna try and fly through these trees here, um, but theoretically, you know, you could get up here and get right up to these. Oh, geez, oh, geez, oh, gosh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, so that was that was a good test. That was a good test. That was a good test right there. Oh, I know I fell out of the tree, so that's good. I think when the throttle goes up quite a bit, we're running into some issues. Oh no. Oh. Well, it looks like we did some uh, testing that I wasn't gonna do until earlier. We did it right now. Here's our uh, camera over here. Oh dang, look at that. That either got chopped up or just broke right off. So polycarbonate is very brittle. So hey, our beeper is actually coming in handy right now because it'll, it'll, it has its own battery, so it'll beep even if the main battery gets unplugged. Here are the results. We have broken the two front propeller guards. The rear ones did not break, possibly because of the material. This is much more flexible, whereas this is much more rigid, but it doesn't uh, flex as much. It's much more likely to shatter as we see here. We lost a couple of these pieces. That makes sense. The way that this is 3D printed just doesn't really work super well for strength. The propellers are okay though. Okay, so we're gonna, 
You okay there? Yeah. Okay, my cameraman just almost exploded. These got pretty smashed up, but you know, I mean, we could probably still fly it like that. Let's give it a try. What do you think is gonna happen? Leave a comment down below. Oh no, 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 no. I mean, yes, that is exactly what I wanted to show you. You see, if you push your motors too far, it will smoke, and that is what it means to smoke a motor. And that's when the motor windings actually burn up, or the coating in the windings actually burn up. That's a bad thing. So that means that this motor is done. Thank you, motor, you've been a good and faithful servant for the last four years or so. Rest in peace. But that was pretty cool. Not smart, but pretty cool. Keep filming me. Can you see me? Yes. The cameraman's falling asleep. I'm sorry. I'd like to thank you for joining me here at RC with Adam Industries. Remember the things that you learned watching this video. Probably don't do most of what I did. If you need some rapid prototyping services, you can check out PCBWay.com and stick around if you want to see exactly how I uh, ordered these parts right here. And remember, get out there, be creative, fly something, have fun, don't smoke a motor or anything else maybe, and I'll see you again very soon. Now we're at PCBWay.com. Um, we're gonna go down to the, uh, the top of the tab here, CNC 3D printing, go down to the 3D printing option because that's what we wanna do today. And then you see we have this uh, drag and drop area here, so we can actually just uh, go into our folders. We're going to just drag and drop this file onto the PCBWay website. Okay, and then the quantity, we're gonna need four. Uh, well, it doesn't give us an option, so I guess we'll do five. Um, tell you what, let's do, let's just for fun, let's, uh, let's do like two of these in ABS, because I think that would be cool. Let's do, should we do silver gray or black? Mm, let's do silver gray, because this black is just, you know, so, so common. Um, we're gonna go with 20% uh, infill. If it even needs infill, I'm not totally sure, but we want it to be nice and lightweight. So that's what we'll do for these ones. Go down here, and we don't have any technical drawings to upload. We don't have any uh, threads or holes that need to be tapped. We don't have any inserts. We don't have any uh, markings on there that we want. We don't have any part assembly requirements. And then printing risk, wall th thickness risk taken. Customer knows about the thin walls designed do not meet the wall thickness standard, but needs to print as is and take all risks. So if you're sure that something is going to print, like in this case, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it is, we'll go ahead and say wall thickness risk taken. Um, and because I don't think it even matters. And then non-standard printed threads, that's fine. We'll just say, okay, because we don't even have printed threads. And uh, this is like uh, <clears throat> for shipping purposes, I guess. We'll just say other and non-metal parts. And that's it. And then any other special requirements. Now I want to do that same model. So let's get this, go back to this. We're going to drag and drop. Okay, and this time, let's go ahead and do, we'll do two. Let's print it in that resin that I really like, that UTR uh, 8100, the transparent resin. I just think it looks so cool. That's what we'll do here. All right, so the same situation here, and that's it. We can scroll back up here. Right now we're looking at a total of 5252, and that is an estimate, and then they'll get back to us with a more accurate uh, amount. So we'll click Submit Request. If you have an account, sign in. If you don't have one, just sign up for an account. So we'll see in our account area, we have our uh, two orders here. The top one here says Being Reviewed, and then the bottom one says Subject to Audit. I'm actually not sure what the Subject to Audit means, but if I need to mention something about that, I will when I edit this video. In any case, right now it's showing the estimated price and then they'll get back to me. Uh, it's usually really quick. Ooh. <laughs> oh, every time, every time. I'm just so impressed with how clear this is. Look at this. That's super cool. Oh, that's, that's pretty nice. So we have some flex right there. It seems quite durable. Um, I'm a little scared to break it, but that turned out really nicely though. So nicely, wow. Up pretty nicely. All right, ooh. Oh, it's like silver looking. Oh, that's interesting. Whoa. Oh, okay, cool. Check that out. Definitely have some stringing going on. You can see that stringing there. So we do have some stringing. Um, I don't know, it seems fairly durable. They did warn me that there could be some issues with this, uh, but I said go ahead and give it a shot. I think it turned out pretty nicely. It does weigh a bit, but not as much as I would think for how large it is. So let's put this on the scale. ABS is coming in at 22 grams. 
30 grams for the UTR 8100. Special thanks to my son for helping me film this one. Good job, boy. Yeah. Is it filming? Yes. Never stop.